In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Deuteronomy chapter 7. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples but it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord.
the epistles from Romans chapter 8. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Alleluia in verse. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We sing him 544. You may be seated.
her. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Finding, going, selling everything, buying. Those actions, common to two of the three parables heard in today's gospel, those actions are striking, spectacular, noteworthy. We ought to pay attention to those actions. Common to two parables, these actions form a type of refrain, a repetitive phrase connecting the two parables together. Finding, going, selling everything, buying. Finding, going, selling everything, buying. Those actions of that man and of that merchant, they point us to Jesus and to Jesus' work for you and for me. Finding, going, selling everything, and buying. Those actions point to redemption. Jesus' redemption, his work of salvation for you. Those parables point to Jesus as do today's hymns. Given that I serve you as assistant pastor, minister of music, it's probably expected that I would bring hymns into the sermon today. And so, singing of the Son, we sang 822, He bought His church with His own blood. He cleansed her in that blessed flood. Again, singing of the Son, 544, we sang of the Son's work for us, singing 13 times that He performed His work for us. The piano led him. How deep the Father's love for us. That hymn asked this question. How deep the Father's love for us that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure? 542, another question asked. What kind of love is this? And then the answer, greater love no one has ever known. This love, 692, is love that led the Son to serve His own creation. Love that led Him to come and share our flesh and blood. Love. Remarkable, spectacular love. Love is behind those hymns, and love is behind the actions, the parables put before us today. Finding, going, selling, everything, buying. Actions a fictional man and merchant performed. Actions that point us to what Jesus achieved for you and me when he redeemed the world. In these parables, Jesus is the man and the merchant. You and I, we're the treasure in the field, we're the pearl of great value. We're the treasure and the pearl not because of some quality intrinsic in us. Like Israel of old, we had no value of our own, no reason which would merit God to love us. No reason existed because you and me and every person conceived and born the natural way Every person was conceived and born with an endless desire 
to sin. In fact, we were born enemies of God. We were born under the power of the devil. We were born a wretch, as that song puts it. A wretch, meaning despicable, disgraceful to God. We were born, therefore, not cute and cuddly to God, but we were born a child of nature. We were born with a lifelong sinful condition, a condition that would condemn us to hell unless we were freed from it. And the really terrible news is that we could not free ourselves from this condition. We were born a lost and condemned sinner. Nevertheless, God redeemed you. Finding, going, selling everything, buying Actions of redemption. Waves of speaking about God's work for you in Christ. Jesus purchased and won you from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. He purchased you not with gold or silver. The catechism reminds us that he purchased us with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Love, remarkable, incredible love can be the only explanation for why God does any good thing for sinful people. Again, to be clear, this love is pictured by the man who bought the field and the merchant who bought the pearl. The seeking love of God searches high and low for that one pearl of infinite value, for that entire field, for the apple of his eye, for the entire world. He created and loves. And he gives everything he has, even his only begotten son, in order to make it his treasured possession. That work God accomplished for you and for the whole world 2,000 years ago, one time for all people, that work God delivered to you at baptism Delivering that work, claiming you as his own, his own treasured possession. The first of today's two parables are about the love of God in Christ that stops at nothing to rescue the corrupted world, including you and me. The first two parables teach that You are God's treasure, his pearl of great blood-bought value. Remember this good news. You'll want to remember this good news because as you live life, you'll realize that following Jesus isn't easy. In fact, Jesus never told us a life of discipleship, a life following him, walking with him. He never told us that type of life would be easy. In fact, when he walked this earth, he gave no indication to his own 12 that it would be an easy life of following. We've heard some pretty tough gospel readings over these summer weeks. Matthew 10, Matthew warned the 12 that evil men would deliver them over to courts and flog them in their synagogues. Jesus even said, when, not if, But when, he said, when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. He said a person's enemies would be of his own household because households would be divided. Some of the house believing in Jesus, others not believing in Jesus. Matthew chapter 11 highlights John the Baptist. John the Baptist is imprisoned soon to be beheaded, killed because of his faithful preaching to Herod, Antipas. Earlier in Matthew 13, two weeks ago now, we heard the parable of the sower. Remember how three-fourths of the sowing attempts met unsuccessfully with, with bad results? Birds and sun scorching and snatching away. And then we only had a fourth of the sowing efforts that culminated in, a, in an abundant harvest. 
these chapters, these recent chapters of Matthew teach that following Jesus wouldn't be easy for the disciples. And by extension, they teach us that following Jesus today isn't going to be easy either. It's never been easy in the course of Christian history. It's not going to be easy because the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh work against God. Ephesians chapter 6 puts it this way. We battle against the cosmic powers over this present darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Think of it this way. The world tempts us to embrace the flow of soul-damaging garbage that our televisions and phones bring to our lives. The devil, hoping to change our thinking, glamorizes transgender activists but casts Christians as bullies. Our sinful nature wants us to gratify the cravings of the flesh. Sexual immorality, covetousness, jealousy among those cravings. In those moments of battle, when you feel the world's pressure on your shoulders, when the temptations of the world, the devil's cunning ideas and the flesh's desires all pound on you, when you feel yourself buckling under the pressure, and even succumbing to it in your thoughts, maybe even in your words and in your deeds, turn away from that pressure. Turn away. Led by the Holy Spirit, turn away in repentance and turn to the pure fountain of God's Word. That Word declares to you that you are treasured. God's valuable, treasured possession. So valuable to God that God didn't spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all. So valuable that Jesus brings you into His everlasting, shining palace of joy. Remember, be encouraged. At times you may feel worthless. At times you may feel that the world has no appreciation for your value. You may look around and feel insignificant, nothing but a grain of sand or dust in the wind. But be encouraged. You are to die for, as is the whole world. The whole world is to die for. Finding, going, selling everything, buying. Jesus' is work of redemption to keep encouraging you along life's way so that you can keep hearing this good news over and over again so that you stay on the right path, the only path that leads to his everlasting palace. Jesus not only gives you his preached and spoken and written word, but he also gives you the comfort food of absolution and of his own supper. The pastor's voice telling you that your sins are forgiven in the stead of Jesus. And Jesus' body and blood truly present here for you to eat and to drink. Those gifts comfort you in this life as we all walk towards the next. The life of the world to come. We walk towards the next life empowered and motivated for faithfulness, walking even in the face of opposition and temptation thrown at us, walking and following him, sustained by his word and comforted by his food, believing that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God In Christ Jesus our Lord. That love is a remarkable, incredible love. A dying love. A living love. This love carries you into the end of time, the close of the age. Reminding you that you 
belong to Jesus. You are valuable. Finding, going, selling, everything, buying. Actions. Jesus' actions. Actions of redemption. Actions of salvation. Oh, love, how deep. How great the Father's love for us. What kind of love is this? This kind is Jesus' love for you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith until life everlasting. We stand and confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. Today we remember Jane Balcom, our member who is currently hospitalized after suffering a stroke last week. We also remember Ed Heitman who is recovering at home after hospitalization. And we continue to pray for all those individuals whose names appear on our, prayer, on our parish prayer list. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have redeemed us out of your steadfast love. Grant that the gospel may go forth unhindered and your spirit may bring many into this fellowship of the redeemed. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have revealed to us the true treasure of Christ's cross and resurrection. Grant that we may pursue your kingdom with all our hearts, souls, minds, and bodies. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, you justify us for the sake of Christ. Comfort any who are troubled by the memory of past sins or visited by the temptation to believe they cannot be forgiven. Give them confidence in Christ that he died for them and still intercedes for them. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, you have given us various offices in our lives. Grant us faithfulness in these callings that we may see them as gifts through which we serve you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant wisdom to Joseph, our president, Mike, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they may seek what is best for all in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of married life. On this day, we rejoice with Jim and Lori and Gary and Mary as they observe their wedding anniversaries. 
Bless them in the years to come so that they may remain faithful to you and devoted to each other. By your presence, glad in each day that you graciously grant them. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, bestow your comfort upon all who are burdened by sickness and affliction, especially Jane, Ed, Mary, Michael, Michael, Sarah, Celia, Jane, Harry, Anne, Robin, Dawn, Kathy, Tom, Sharon, Cindy, Missy, Dawn, Renee, Emily, Bernadette, George, Bonnie, Dan, Billy, Stefan, Doug, Ruth Ann, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, Sharon, Ron, Ruth Ann, Ruth, Inez, and Mel. Grant that they may await healing and deliverance in the firm conviction that nothing can separate them from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant that all who partake in Holy Communion today do so rejoicing that the Christ they receive in this sacrament also intercedes for them at your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, it is not for the sake of our numbers or strength or birth that you preserve us, but for the sake of your faithfulness and steadfast love. As you preserved your ancient people of Israel for the sake of your promises, keep your holy church on earth and also preserve our synod, we pray, for the sake of your name. Lead Pastor Boyce Clare and all our delegates and members gathered in convention according to your good pleasure and will, that in word and action we may love you and keep your commandments, confessing your steadfast love and faithfulness even to a thousand generations. Through Christ the crucified, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We sing the offertory. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on it as it is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given things, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We remain standing as we sing, Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing His praise. Tell everyone what He has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear His name. He recalls His promises and leads His people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you are the gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the next hymn.
few announcements. Today I call your attention to the bulletin insert explaining the school supply drive. It's back to school time. August 1st is Tuesday, so we're getting into the groove of the school year. So uh, please reflect on this brochure, and if you can contribute any supplies, follow the instructions of where to place those contributions. Pastor Boyce Clare is in Milwaukee at the Synod Convention. He will be back Thursday evening. As he announced last week, I am available for any emergency pastoral care that's needed this week. I already made one hospital visit yesterday. And so if there are more visits to make, please call Jenny or some of you have my phone number. So I'm sure somehow I'll get the message. And uh, prayerfully, our member who is doing okay yesterday smiling and laughing and talking uh, prayerfully that uh, she will be the only one in the hospital for the foreseeable future. But if the need arises, I'm available to help. The church picnic follows today. We would want to have the meal prayer so that you can start eating and not have to wait for me to have the meal prayer over there. We have to wait for the hot dogs. Any Well, it's still, we'll pray here. But I want to thank Aiden and Rosie for running the organ. They kept the service running so smoothly today. So thank you very much for a perfect job of uh, playing back all the recorded music this morning. Let us pray the uh, catechism mealtime prayer. You can pray it with me if uh, you know it by memory. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bountiful goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a great week.